Greetings from Berlin, Germany, and welcome to 30 Minutes Promoting Unity and Diversity with Wani Angerer in Moving Cultures. Our guest, number 109, is Tofit Matuk from Lebanon, based in Rome, Italy. Welcome, Tofit. How are you? Hi, Vani. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> very, very happy that you accepted our invitation to talk about your life, your journey, and what the future is going to bring in your life in this new era. So, who is Tofit Matut? Well, that's, that's a good question to start. <laughs> uh, I'm a musician from Lebanon. Um, an orchestra conductor that has been working uh, like more than 18 years uh, in the field of music in Lebanon. And uh, in the meantime, I was uh, also working as an academic uh, professor at the, at the university. Wow. Then, then I have different, uh, different, uh, um, I'm multifaceted, uh, different uh, chapeau, as we say in French, uh, in music and in teaching. But uh, the main thing that, uh, that my work goes in education and music in Lebanon in different, uh, in different spaces. Okay. Lebanon is a country and a society that is multicultural and very diverse and very ancestral as well. Could you please tell me how your ancestors, your parents, your great parents, people from your community has made you the person you are today? I think, as you said, Lebanon is is very ancestral uh, in the in the way of living, uh, and uh, parents are uh, um, are doing uh, a great job in education. Then uh, I think all uh, all what I am today is what what my parents and what my country uh, gave to me. In the mean the main the main thing that uh, I, I didn't I didn't live in in a family of musicians. I am the only musician in my family. Then it isn't uh, music in my life came not really uh, not really from a background uh, where uh, where there was music. I was it was my it was my passion from the beginning. My love. For the music, uh, my parents uh, gave me uh, the love uh, of of the country, the love of the family, the love that I needed in the in the time uh, in the difficult times of war in Lebanon, because I um, I was born in Lebanon in the in the year of uh, the the civil war. And then I lived till the ninth, uh, till till the end of the war. Then uh, it wasn't. Uh, it was a difficult time to live in the in this era. And uh, the, despite all things, my uh, family gave me uh, all uh, the support that I needed, even in education, uh, even. I wanted to go to the conservatory to start my piano lessons and everything. It was, it was for me the event to go to the conservatory and start my uh, my lesson. Then family, uh, family gives me uh, really uh, the support that I needed, uh, and and uh, and uh, and helped me be the man that I am today. Tafit. Besides family as a support system, that is what actually was taking place in your life. They were always present, they always heard your needs and they made your dreams come true. But most of the motivation and the intentions and the work was done by you. So tell me how this rich culture of sounds and images has influenced your career? 
um, I didn't. I think I didn't. I didn't expect the one once even once in my life that I will reach the place that, that I am today. And I didn't plan for it even. I was uh, even living uh, the present and working on my uh, future, preparing myself, working on my uh, on my person, working on my education, working on my knowledge enhancing my culture more and more this was uh, this was the main thing that bring brought me today for the for where i am i think the main thing it was nothing really was planned in my life i didn't said that i want to be this i want to do this i want to conduct this orchestra mm -hmm. and i want to do uh, to be a conductor at this opera house or other then i it was it was coming like okay and the proposal was coming okay i will try and it was successful then i was going with the with the wind don't you think that is also some kind of a mystical touch into this because you said that you were born and educated during the war everything sounded very complicated but in your case everything was flowing. I think there was some kind of a energy supporting yourself as a human being to come and be this person who is teaching, mentoring other generations, conducting different orchestras worldwide and impacting communities. What do you think about this possibility of being connected with this divine energy that is music? Uh, especially in my life and in my experience, uh, I believe that uh, I believe that the presence of God in my life sure uh, has been uh, very very wide in different experiences in different uh, in in each in each minute of my life. Then the divine presence of God uh, sure. Uh, uh, change all uh, all the way of thinking to enhance all the meanings of everything and then when when we experience on the personal level this we can express also this to to other to people that we are sharing with them you know because music is so for for example when i'm when i'm conducting uh, music with choir there is a text and when i start to think about the text for example if it was oratorio or something then and if you don't really experience what is the text saying the biblical test the bible test or other things in the oratorio then you can you can express it more in a way that you if you are leaving it and then it will uh, it will help the interpretation or the music mm -hmm. and then you can really express deeply what you are feeling and to show it to, to the public and to the performers and then passion and music they encounter together and uh, the, the result uh, the result goes successful for that i think uh, experiencing uh, god in our life is very important it's very important on the level of uh, creation because God started, the word started with the creation, then uh, experiencing this in our music and our passion, it's, I think it's, it's part, it's very important part in our life. You mentioned a very important word that is creation and creation is linked to creativity that it has to do with uh, imagination, inspiration, and the capacity to transform things that cannot be seen or touched into something meaningful and real. So let's talk about the process of it, of a conductor. I don't think everybody knows what is required to be a conductor. Can you let us know a little bit insightful 
what your career is about? Being conductor, I think it's difficult to to say it, but to 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 be a conductor, it's important that uh, you have a wide uh, knowledge of the music, and it's not only about uh, about doing this in front of an orchestra and gestures and everything. It's about knowledge about preparation as we say in Italian soprattutto the preparazione then uh, preparation is very very important because the personal preparation not only technical preparation sure technical preparation is important the knowledge of uh, of instruments also is very important is the knowledge of uh, voice is very important especially when you deal with voices and opera uh, and singing because it's not the same it's not the same thing when you conduct instrumental and you conduct voices i think it's the same thing but there is each thing that have uh, have uh, its own uh, with voice you have there's the respiration there's a lot of uh, think that it's related to the voice that it's important then when you conduct voice to to know the voice and uh, um, the most important thing that i was saying it's preparation because because my field i i, I normally I, I voice with voice then it take me a time to prepare an opera for example this month i was i was in italy for a month and uh, i was studying like two operas in the sun it took me like one month to study a full opera then preparation it's important then i will not uh, the procedure before before arriving to conduct an opera or to conduct a work it's important then you start uh, all the basics of studying, finalizing a, 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 um, a, di a, di a diploma of instrument, piano mainly, and then all the, um, all the compositions, studies, mm -hmm. and then working on the gesture. And gesture, uh, I've been in my life, in my career, uh, also because I was coming from from a background of singer, opera singer, then choir conductor, and then I met my professor, and Unicotra, who changed me really on the level of orchestra technical gesture, and helped me really uh, be the conductor that I am today. And it's not like this. It will not uh, because uh, in conducting, it's luck. Like, it's not one plus one mm -hmm. equal two. Then it's important that that you find the gest the gesture that can answer the music really can mm -hmm. express the music it's not doing one two three four one two three four it's expressing the music in your jest then it to lead to creativity mm -hmm. to lead to uh, to music it's not only to technicity Tofit, practically you're talking about communication because that is a very strong element into conducting. You need to communicate yeah. with the musicians, with the environment, with the story, with everything that is taking place simultaneously. It's like several layers of information taking place. That is a very sophisticated uh, way of uh, transmitting information. Tell me about that. How do you deal with so much information in one space and at once? I don't think if you are, if you, if the person, if the conductor is prepared, I don't think that it can be a problem really to think about all the layers. Because when you are prepared, you can just express and communicate to the orchestra what you are, what you, what what is your point of view what is your interpretation and then the layers will go just 
the most important thing uh, is really to, uh, to communicate uh, correctly and to show it. Otherwise, if you cannot express it in your gesture and, and you cannot, then you cannot communicate. But it's important that you can, and you can show it in your gesture um, very natural, mm -hmm. not really very sophisticated. Otherwise, people in front of you will search what he's doing. Oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't understand all this kind of, then it's important that if, if we are speaking about gesture, we're speaking about body. Mm -hmm. And then because we're expressing our ideas in our body and all the body language that we, we know, uh, we know about it. Then if I express it naturally, then it's in me. If I'm searching to express it, not naturally, really very sophisticated and not, then it's not me. Then it's mm -hmm. very important to be, to be yourself when you conduct, to be, otherwise you can, I cannot, with all the love and the respect, for example, for Karayan and the big conductors of the history, I cannot be Karayan because Karayan is Karayan. Mm -hmm. I am, I am myself. I express myself. I express my gesture, my way of thinking, uh, the, all the background that I have in my life, all the history that I, I bring with me from Lebanon, from the war, from the present that I live. This, this also is very, uh, very present in, in the way that you, uh, that you, that you can communicate with, with other people. Mm -hmm. Afid, you have over 18 years working on the music field. And you're also talking at the moment about authenticity, you know, to be true to yourself, to be true to your beliefs, to be true to your self-love. Tell me, how do you see the different stages of your career and how they have made you a little bit more resilient and more proactive? Like, let's say the first five years and how do the environment work and then the next five years and then the next five years. Can you be able to give us some insight on that, please? Mm, I, think, I think the starts, the beginnings, uh, wa uh, it was like a speculation. I want to do this, I want to do this. Okay, I was coming from a background of uh, opera singer. I wanted to do the conductor because it was my main, in, in, my, uh, in, my, uh, in my study, uh, I did my diploma in pianoforte and then opera singing but the main, and choir conducting. But the main, the main thing was for me to be the orchestra conductor. Then I did mm -hmm. all this for being the orchestra conductor and all the, the, the studies that I make it after uh, for musicology and other things, it was for this purpose. Then it was not, it was speculation at the beginning, it was searching, uh, searching the, the field, it will work, it will not work. And I started, and my first uh, first years was the, the Lebanese Philharmonic Orchestra. I my, uh, did my debut as orchestra conductor with the Lebanese Philharmonic Orchestra in 2012. And it worked very well. And then the orchestra invited me um, the second season for other concerts. And I started like this. And then after uh, uh, my career took another path with uh, the Beirut Chance Festival uh, that I, when I be nominated the artistic director for the festival, it's a festival, it's a unique festival in, in Lebanon that um, that it's free for the public and it presents like 30 concerts in 23 days. And I'm so, uh, I'm so proud to be part of this initiative of this festival because uh, what this festival done to Lebanese society and to Beirut uh, is huge because uh, it gives uh, 
it gives the possibility to all people from the society different backgrounds of the community that they don't have the possibility to pay to to pay a ticket to have music and to see international concerts and it gives pretty uh, it gives it uh, it gives uh, free uh, the possibility for this kind of people and now uh, we are in like 14000 people in the season and then, yes then from 2013 i've been in beirut and uh, till now i'm still uh, artistic director and uh, uh, this gives uh, my career another also another uh, good experience you know to uh, how to organize a season to be in contact with different artists uh, from different uh, kind uh, of uh, from, from international artists different kind of artists in the world and then organizing all uh, their venues this gives me a lot of experience on this field and put me in contact with a, with almost all the world that i'm working uh, with the us with europe with all uh, all the musical world that i'm working with today and uh, if i look back to my career now from the beginning till now i see that it's really it's really i'm now i'm in my mid career i think it's really what i've done in in almost 20 years it's it's good mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, friends they say they say to me you did, you did in 20 years what others can do in 40 and 45 <laughs> years <laughs> true <laughs> then then uh, this uh, this thing and also i i did not uh, I I, uh, I enhanced also my academic uh, background because uh, in the meantime that I'm doing all this career I also I uh, I was at the university assistant professor I was teaching uh, and lately I've been three years nominated secretary general of the university and I had this opportunity to be also in the positions, the high positions of the university to organize all the university, uh, you know, courses, faculty, and this was, this also gives me a lot of experience. Another, another view of, uh, of how to deal with people from different backgrounds, not only musicians, you know, because also other people had, had other way of connecting and communicating. And also, it gives uh, it gives a lot of experience and uh, and new uh, and new experience with people that you don't know maybe directly. Then this is this is my uh, this is my insight about the last uh, 15, uh, 16 years maybe. Topic. Let's talk about the healing power of music, because through our conversation, we have been actually portraying how music is communication, how music is a way of enhance our opportunities to have uh, better skills to actually get the communities together. Talk to me about your experience with music as a healing tool. Music has been all the time for me personally as a healing tool. Because uh, music, in music, I was, music for me, it was the only way to express, to communicate, to express my feeling. Maybe I hadn't the possibility, maybe in my life even, if I would speak on the emotional level and other levels uh, to express emotions and maybe happiness and maybe being angry or other, it was the music was only the the only way to express these feelings. Uh, and when we express feelings, we go, we. we we cannot be frustrated then for me it was music was was 
all the time healing was all the time the healer for me because it was give it, it gave me the opportunity to express myself to express my my life to express what i feel inside of me from being angry from being to from being happy from all all the status that we that each one of us can live in his uh, i'm not saying that uh, I, i've been angry all my life or been happy all my this uh, mix of everything mm -hmm. but expressing it it uh, it could me it could uh, it helped me not to be frustrated being frustrated and being i was expressing this i'm not the person that i'm used uh, I, I used to really express in in words what i feel mm -hmm. i am maybe maybe i am and i could be very uh, very uh, intense in this but uh, the real expression of uh, of emotions it's not, it can it can be it can be for me it was in music and for that i was expressing in music what i cannot express in my own words in my life for that it was it was healing for me as one of my friends also i can say my therapist so we speak a lot and then and he said to me you know music is your therapy and because i can express my feelings in, in music and then i express my anger my happiness without sp saying words also it's 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 full of emotions I think also the music has been a catalyst of the society because you have passed through so much violence in world and some kind of a disconnection from a, a whole. And you think these classical concerts, like you say, bringing the communities together to celebrate unity has been also a way of healing Lebanon? Yes, it's uh, funny uh, when, when I spoke about the festival, uh, uh, the thing that the unique, I said Beirut Chantis was a unique festival because it wasn't a festival like other festivals in Lebanon. In Lebanon, there is a lot of music festival that there were known on the international level of everything than bringing artists from all the world. Beirut Chantis is not only this. Beirut Chantis, it was bringing together people from all backgrounds and when I'm saying mm -hmm. from all backgrounds of the society I'm saying being Christian being mm -hmm. Muslim going from all the confessions mm -hmm. and the concert was where because you know there is no theaters in Lebanon a concert so the concert was what uh, in the churches downtown churches of Beirut mm -hmm. And you was, and the concerts was in the Christmas time. Then from December one to December twenty three, then some some of them are Christmas concerts. Then you will see in the Christmas concert even people from not Christian background. Mm -hmm. Then, then then it's me. It means that uh, that music can go after uh, uh, can unite people even with difference even after uh, years of uh, war civil war between christians and muslims mm -hmm. music put it, them together mm -hmm. and then music can uh, can unite them despite the, all uh, all the different political differences and economical that it's actually going uh, lebanon this year is going through because this year it's it's been really a uh, very difficult year for Lebanese after the explosion of August uh, 2020 and for August uh, and it was the year was really really difficult music still is working the catalyst to unite them 
and we are preparing, for example, the next edition of the Beirut Chance with all the difficulties that we have on the level of economy, on the level of politics, on the level of uncertainty that we will do it or we will not do it. People, for example, people in Lebanon now, they are seeking uh, the basics to live. Mm -hmm. More than 70% of people, they are, they are getting to be poor, than to, to have milk, to have the medicines, the normal things that mm -hmm. people need and we are thinking to do we still think to do the festival because we believe that culture it's also important it's not only food that it is important mm -hmm. so that is practically your contribution to healing the soul and yeah. to heal the soul arts and music is the best medicine i have here a little uh, video that i want to share let me get it here and see. Wait a bit. Let me stop this one and go back to our video. And see if those can betray us. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, let's see. We go once more. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's okay. Tafit. Yeah. These are your two passions in one. That is the voice and the orchestra. Yeah. And we already reached the 30 minutes conversation. And we will be very happy if you can give a message to the new generations and to the society regarding unity, diversity, and inclusion. My message, maybe uh, what, what I will say, it's from what I live, what I experienced in my life. For the young generation, I would say, uh, young people that I, they want to be, they are working on themselves to be musicians, to, be, uh, to excel in their lives. Wherever you are from, or you, whatever you experience in your life, if you decide to if you decide to be a person or a certain person decide it fix your goal and go for it and don't 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 think about you you are from this part of the world or from the other part of the world or everything what what you can be you can be what you are and what you are is the great uh, the great thing that that will you will you will express it to the people to the public Tafit, thank you so much for promoting you, <laughs> unity and diversity 
through your Thank philosophy you. of life, through your work, through your initiatives, and through everything that is surrounding you. Wishing you all the best and blessings today and always, Tafi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vanny. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Bye bye. Have a nice day. Bye -bye. The same.